All right, let's get going. Uh, so first item in the news, uh, uh, of course, uh, from uh, Saturday was the rescue of uh, four hostages out of uh, the Gaza Strip, out of a, uh, a town. It's called the refugee camp, but it's not a refugee camp. It's a town where people live in, in buildings, not in tents, uh, and they're not refugees because the great grandparents, maybe, maybe the great grandparents, but maybe the grandparents were left uh, what became Israel because uh, they were told to leave by uh, the uh, other Arab countries uh, because once the Arab countries were going to defeat Israel and kill the Jews, they would then be able to return. Um, and and uh, to the property. Anyway, they left. They, they they went to hide in Gaza. And I guess initially they were refugee camps, but they're never going back. They're never going back to their homes in Israel. Um, they're not refugees. They, they've resettled in Gaza. This is their country. This is the place they live. And uh, their homes are solid. And the only reason they're called refugees is because uh, the UN UNRWA which is the UN agency for Palestinian refugees, only Palestinian refugees may apply. UNRWA has a, a built-in incentive for the refugee crisis, for, for the idea of, of them being refugees never to go away. They may, you know, they, they, they have power and make good money off of it. And, um, you know, the, the so-called refugees themselves have an interest because they get aid from everywhere and everybody feels sorry for them. And, uh, I mean, you know, they squeeze an extra buck here and there. So, but the reality is the, the people who are already two generations, three generations, what is it, eight years removed from what happened, right? Uh, the almost 80 years removed from it. Uh, how many generations is that? Is it generation 30, 40 years? Anyway, at least two generations removed. And they are now citizens of Gaza, you know, whoopee. Uh, anyway, um, right in the middle, in the middle of the Gaza Strip, north to south, but also in the middle from the ocean, uh, from the uh, Mediterranean Sea to the Israeli border is one of these so-called refugee camps. Uh, and it turned out that uh, four of the hostages were being held there by uh, two different families. Uh, one uh, was holding the female, uh, the female hostage, uh, a, young, a young woman, and then uh, three of the hostages were being held uh, not far from there, uh, by another, quote, family, while being protected by Hamas fighters all around. Um, and Israel went in and basically got the four out and, uh, and got them to safety. And I don't know if you've seen the videos of them, you know, meeting up with their family. And, and I mean, God, it, 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 unbelievably emotional, un unbelievably satisfying um, it, it just sad, it, it, just that they had to go through the horrors that they went through, but um, but they got home, and and um, and and that is uh, that is pretty amazing. Um, in the operation, uh, it's hard to tell how many Palestinians died, but according to the Palestinian authorities, which are known for their scientific reliability, I'm kidding, who are known for lying lying outrageously about the numbers of casualties. According to them, it's 274. Israel claims it was close to 100. I don't know what the real number is. I don't really care. Uh, it, I don't think it's, uh, I don't think it's, uh, it is relevant to anything. Uh, but, uh, you know, so uh, these hostages were kept in a civilian, surrounded by civilians, in a civilian context, in a civilian building, guarded by people who seem like civilians, one of the people who, quote, hosted, <laughs> hosted um, these, uh, 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 you know, these uh, individuals who were kidnapped uh, was a Al Jazeera uh, uh, reporter, journalist, uh, who was writing about Gaza and about the war and about the hostage situation, I guess, while keeping a hostage in his apartment. I mean, it's unbelievable how disgusting, horrific this really is, uh, and 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 uh, and what this what this tells you about uh, the Palestinians, about Hamas, but but more broadly about the Palestinians, uh, and uh, that that you know that that this is 
this is how they were keeping the hostages, and uh, nobody among the Palestinians had any problem with that, and, and so on. And then they complain when 274 are killed. And a lot of leftists in the US are saying, whoa, was it really worth to rescue four Israelis to kill 274 plus one Israeli hero died as well? Is, 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 was it worth it? And, and my, my, my response to that is, you cannot get high enough in terms of the number, um, uh, you know, in order to rescue, to rescue Israeli citizens, in order to rescue the innocent, to, to, to rescue the victims. There is no, there is no number, uh, you know, am I willing, is it okay if, if uh, the Israelis kill 1,000 in the process? Is it okay to kill 10,000 in the process? Is it okay to kill 100,000 in the process? There is no upper bound. You, you kill as many as necessary to get your people out. You kill as many as necessary in order to win. And that has to be made super explicit. Super explicit. And the only reason anybody has to die is because they're keeping hostages. The only reason anybody has to die is because they're fighting. If, if, they, if, they, if the Palestinians had all said, oh, you want your hostages back? Oh, we didn't know you were this serious about it. Okay, fine, take them. You can walk out of here. But the reality was they ran, they got their RPGs, they got their AK-47s and M-16s, and, and they started shooting at the Israelis, and the Israelis shot back and bombed back and, you know, uh, uh, artillery shells back and, uh, you know, F-16s back, and they did whatever's necessary to get their people out there, out of there, as safely as possible. So, hooray to the unbelievable courage, unbelievable courage, uh, ingenuity, um, uh, just a strategy, strategic thinking, um, and, and just, just capabilities, but again, courage, 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 of the soldiers who went in and, and rescued the four hostages, just unbelievable. Um, as is often the case in Israeli operations, particularly special forces operations, the one casualty was a commanding officer, was one of the commanders of the operation, a, a 35-year-old, I think, with, uh, with kids and a wife. Um, I mean, uh, he is the one person in this whole thing that, that it, it, it makes sense for us to mourn, and he deserves our mourning. Uh, he is an incredibly courageous guy, could have delegated this, um, but he was the leader. This was, was his operation, not even a, a, a soldier. He, he is part of a special unit of the police, the Israeli police, which is an anti-terrorism hostage-taking unit, and he was the commander of it. Uh, and he got injured and later died um, when, when, when he got to the hospital, um, uh, tragically. This whole operation, this whole uh, operation to rescue... Um, to rescue um, the hostages, if you want to understand what it's like, uh, y you should watch, I mean, there's one show on TV that, that is exactly this. It's, it, it, it's, <laughs> it's stunningly how much this is a reflection of that TV show, uh, or the TV show is a reflection of this, and that is the show Fauda. So I highly, highly recommend you watch Fauda. Uh, I think there are four seasons. Season three is in the Gaza Strip. Is is uh, is it portrayed three or, or two or three three I think is in the Gaza Strip, uh, and you get to see the claustrophobia, you get to see the densely populate the dense population, you get to see the difficulty of getting in and out. Um, but basically, what Fauda is is about a real unit of Israeli, really of the of the of the uh, of the Shabak, which is the Israeli internal security. Uh, it is a real unit. Uh, it is a unit. Uh, the, the lead actor in it was a member of this unit. Just to be clear, this is the unit, Fauda. The unit depicted at Fauda is the unit that went into Gaza on Saturday. It is the unit that freed the hostages. This was a Fauda operation. If you've seen the show, you know what they do. They speak fluent Arabic. They have relatively dark skin, so they, they, you know, easily, easily look like Palestinians. They drove in with a 
nondescript uh, van. Uh, you can see pictures on the van on the internet, and you can see it again on, in Fauda on the TV show. Fauda, F-A-U-D-A. It's on Netflix. It's one of the best shows you'll see. I mean, it's, it's certainly, if you like action, it is one of the best action TV shows ever. Yeah, four seasons, I recommend watching all of them, although the first is best, is the best. They're all excellent. They went in, in discreet uh, vans. They got right up, right up into it, uh, uh, wearing basically Arab clothes, looking like the local population, merging in. They had been um, uh, watching, they'd been tracking this location. They've known, I don't know for how long, but maybe for weeks, uh, that the hostages were being kept here. Uh, inside Israel, they actually built a model. They built a model of what that street looks like or what the buildings look like or where they believe the hostages were in. They trained and practiced on that model for, for days. Um, everything was ready. There was uh, backup troops, troops who were backing up, but they didn't know what they were backing up because this was such a secret uh, program. There was an extraction team that comprised of a number of special forces units from the Israeli military. But the actual operation itself was actually conducted by the Fauda team, we'll call them, and uh, the, uh, the anti-terrorism hostage team of uh, the Israeli police. Uh, but again, they went in looking like locals. And then once the shooting started, they, uh, and they needed to get out of there, and Hamas was everywhere, and people were holding guns. And of course, when the people are holding guns, um, those guns, are, uh, you know, you don't know, they're not wearing uniforms. Anybody in the street could be a Hamas member. There is zero way. There is absolutely no way to tell who is Hamas and who is not. So they shot their way out, but in the process, uh, they, got, uh, they were backed up by, by planes, helicopters, artillery, other units, uh, other military units, and of course they, they did the handoff uh, uh, closer to the beach on the western side of the Gaza, and the hostages uh, were all taken, uh, flew, flown into Israel. Uh, an amazing operation. It's, it is an amazing. Let's, let's believe the Hamas numbers, which I'm fine with. Let's say 274 Palestinians died. I mean, 274 to one in terms of casualties on the ground. Sometimes you see these action movies, and in action movies, the good guys just seem to shoot everybody and none of the good guys get killed. And you go, oh, that's not real. That, 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 that can't really happen. You know, um, no, that's exactly what happens. And, and a big part of the reason, not only do they have the backup uh, from the air and from other places, but also it's an expression of how well-trained they are, of how committed they are, how motivated they are, but really how much training and how extensive that training is, how diligent that training is, that makes it possible for these uh, soldiers, uh, these specialists, to be able to go in to an incredibly hostile area and, um, you know, and, and then uh, take, out, uh, take out people and, and uh, protect protect the hostages that they were taking out and at the same time and at the same time just eviscerate uh, the Hamas and whatever whoever else participated in uh, their attempts uh, to uh, uh, to uh, rescue uh, to, to, to in attempts to thwart uh, or to stop uh, the rescue operation uh, truly amazing uh, again uh, you know movies should be made about this it's one of those operations that are truly amazing I will note this, interestingly, not interestingly, I mean, just factually. Um, this area where this operation happened is an area that uh, the uh, IDF is not yet occupied. It is an area they have not gone into. Uh, there is a certain percentage of the Gaza Strip that has not yet been occupied by the IDF. Who knows for what reasons? Starting with Rafa in the south, now they're starting to occupy it. But there are many other areas in the south, in the southwest in particular, um, that have not yet been occupied and where it is likely the hostages are located. It's also possible that Israel knows where a lot of the hostages are, but does not yet have an operational plan to get them out. 
does not yet know how to do it without giving the Hamas the opportunity to kill all the hostages that are there. So we don't know what the intelligence is. We don't know. They, they might know where Sinwa and the other Hamas leadership are, but they are probably surrounded by hostages. And it could very well be that Israel is hesitant to go directly after them because they, they're worried about them just, uh, you know, murdering all the hostages right there. So a lot of moving parts, a lot is going on. Uh, again, I think uh, the fact that Israel has delayed for so long, the fact that they did not go to the south early, uh, the fact that they it took them almost two weeks to get organized, and then they've they've just gone slowly. Uh, not once they get once they start fighting, but negotiations and and Biden and negotiations and more Biden and dragging it out and all of that. All of that has made it harder to do these kind of operations because uh, in the beginning they had a real element of surprise. In the beginning, uh, you know, they, they could have been much faster, much more devastating uh, and gotten, gotten a lot of this done uh, by now. But I, again, I'll just emphasize from a military, just operational perspective, stunning Go watch Fauda to get a real sense of how these units operate and what is involved and the difficulties involved. Um, in particular, I think season three is in the Gaza Strip and I think involves somewhat of a similar situation, trying to get kidnapped hostages who are in Gaza, trying to get them out, trying to get them back into Israel and, and the, the difficulty and the effort that that involves. All right, yay for the IDF and and uh, and yay. And, and uh, in terms of the various, uh, just discuss, oh, by the way, a lot of the people complaining about the 274 uh, Palestinian deaths and so on are saying, uh, are talking about the hostages being released as if Hamas released them. It's just unbelievable. Not, you know, the hostages being rescued, rescued, no, they were just on vacation in Gaza, and uh, and they just got stuck there in the middle of a war, and it's such inconvenience, such inconvenience, really disgusting. Anyway, uh, you know, one victory at a time, and this is definitely a victory and something to celebrate. Uh, let's hope, let's hope the IDF has more of these up their sleeve. And that we start seeing more uh, hostages uh, freed from their captors, it, not through negotiation, but through military action in the days, weeks, months to come um, as Israel slowly shrinks the space in which uh, Hamas uh, uh, you know, has control and can, uh, can function freely.